Every year, one grieving father in Australia makes a pilgrimage to the place where his son disappeared. Even though Freddie Valentich has been missing for close to 20 years, his father has not given up hope. He believes that one day the extraterrestrials who took his son away may decide to bring him back to Earth. He was a 20-year-old pilot with the Australian Air Training Corps who took off on October 21st, 1978 and was never seen again. Freddie Valentich took off from Moorabbin Airport in Victoria, bound for Cape Otway on King Island. 45 minutes into the flight, the control tower in Cape Otway received an alarming SOS. Valentich was on a collision course with a strange craft he could not identify. According to the tower, the radar screen was clear. For six minutes, Valentich continued to insist that a UFO was approaching him at a high rate of speed. Then his radio went dead. Is there traffic below 5,000? No traffic. Traffic above me at 5,000? None. And none, repeat, none near your position and altitude. Tower, you must recheck. Above, it, now below me, a, a terrible brightness. Nothing. Nothing. And then he was gone. Fred Valentich and his airplane disappeared without a trace. He is considered legally dead by everyone but his father. 17 years after Fred's disappearance, Guido Valentich still makes an annual pilgrimage to Cape Otway, where he believes he lost his eldest son to a UFO. That particular day, I was supposed to be with my son on the airplanes. And uh, I feel a little bit sorry that I didn't go. Because in my mind, I felt that if I would have been with him, perhaps, one would say, the uh, situation could turn out slightly different. Why would a father return here every year on the anniversary of his son's disappearance and reflect on the possibility that his child had a close encounter with a UFO? Because, Guido Valentich says, knowing Freddy, it's the only explanation that makes sense. He was hardworking and honest, a straight shooter who knew how to fly. His future was to be a commercial pilot. He had about close to 200 hours flying. The last uh, time I spoke to him was uh, that morning, the 21st of October, at the breakfast table. And as he went out, I remember Dick was saying to me, you know, the last word he said, oh, it's got to be a beautiful day to fly today. Freddie's flight plan that warm, cloudless evening took him over the infamous Bass Strait, an area known as the Australian Bermuda Triangle. There had been other disappearances, reports of mechanical failures and magnetic anomalies, but Valentich was the first pilot to ever report into the control tower that he was in the presence of a threatening UFO. His voice told the controller to take this SOS seriously. Tower, it is not an aircraft. Repeat, not an aircraft known to us. An identified vehicle is a green light at terminus of upper cylinder. Out of projection appears to be aluminium or some other light metal. The windows are unmistakable. And I see four other lights from the interior. No, not windows. Some other observation area. Tower, he's playing a game. The actual tapes of Freddy's communication with the tower were considered top secret. And Guido Valentich was allowed to listen to his son's last words only one time. Soon after, the tapes were erased. A version of the tape transcript was leaked to the media by anonymous airport personnel. Valentich gave a complete description of the type of the craft, the shape, the portholes, what it was doing, how it was buzzing him, circling him, uh, going off at great speeds, uh, disappearing, coming back. And he was in constant contact with the tower over this period of time until 7.14. Uh, when all of a sudden he said this was approaching him and uh, bathed him in a green light, uh, the plane and everything, and then there was a metal scraping sound and he just disappeared off the face of the earth, the plane and everything. You believe me, Log? Sure do. We know it's Valentich. Thank you, Tower. In proceeding at a speed of 110, at the same course, moving up to 4,000. Wait, wait, engine faltering. I've got rough idling, so make cog. He's coming up for air in tremendous burst. His green light is all over here. It's not an aircraft. Going up to 5,000, 6,000. Long wingless metallic tube spouting flame. I feel scorching. I feel... 229, 229, we hear something tearing. 
229, please reply. When the tower lost radio contact, a search plane was sent to the point of last contact, 12 miles off the coast of Melbourne. There was no sign of Ballantich. They searched by air, by land, and by sea. But after three weeks, searchers had found nothing, and the operation was suspended. 21st of October, because it's one day which I can never forget. I like to go down to respect and study some of the area when this phenomena occur, and I'll be able to see uh, some strange thing perhaps on that particular day. Officially, there were no eyewitnesses to Freddie Valentich's disappearance nearly 20 years ago. But a small group of UFO researchers claim there were eyewitnesses working here, working for the United States government. This is the Pine Gap Research Facility, a tracking station located in the Australian outback. And according to researcher Robert Dean, Pine Gap knows more than it's willing to tell about Fred Valentich. They can track anything from a basketball-sized meteor. There's no question in my mind that the Pine Gap facility tracked that object. They were tracking Fred. They were tracking that object. God knows when the truth will come out. But I think Fred was grabbed. And I know Pine Gap must have monitored the whole damn thing because we monitor everything. According to Dean and others, the Pine Gap tracking station did much more than simply track the last moments of Fred Valentich's life. Did officials there have a hand in the death of an innocent man? A fiery, oblong UFO, no wings, no observable propulsion system, soaring above Australia at unbelievable speed. It was the last thing pilot Fred Valentich saw before he disappeared off the face of the Earth. That was 17 years ago. And from that day to this, his father and a handful of dedicated researchers have searched for information about who or what was controlling that UFO. 229, are you on a collision course? Over. No, it's still at my side. It can, can hang motionless. Orbit over and under me. Proceed, 229. Wingless tube she is. Maybe 100 feet long with a green blast, sometimes green vapor. These were Freddie Valentich's exact words to an air traffic controller when he encountered an unknown object over Australia's Bass Strait. He disappeared minutes later. Now, a small but convincing group of researchers believe that Valentich's encounter must have been observed and was then covered up by a super-secret government tracking facility at Pine Gap, Australia. Anything that comes in from out there in space on the planet is immediately picked up, whether it's a meteor or whatever. If it's one of our own satellites, if it's something we don't know, immediately they pick it up, they monitor it, they photograph it, they track it. That's what Pine Gap does. Robert Dean is a retired United States Army Command Sergeant Major. In his 27-year military career, Dean claims that he was involved in several top secret military operations concerning UFOs. Your program has got a hold of a tiger by the tail here when you start looking into Pine Gap. And I must be honest with you that the Pine Gap facility and all that it's involved with is probably the most, one of the most secret installations in the world. The NSA is involved, the CIA is involved, and the National Reconnaissance Office is part of that. They call it a joint space defense facility, but it's a hell of a lot more than that. But other experts insist the location is simply an advanced satellite communications facility. Most governments uh, uh, don't even uh, publicly admit that they are involved in satellite intelligence operations. That's probably about as close as any government is ever going to go to saying that they're involved in signals intelligence collection functions. Well, I can tell you that as a result of 30 years of my personal research, the fact that I am ex-military, the fact that I still have a bunch of old cronies in sensitive places. The real secret behind it, the real undercover, unannounced, unpublished operation involves the alien reality and UFOs.
The Pine Gap Research Facility has never commented publicly on a possible link between their operations and Freddie Valentich's disappearance. But this photograph suggests there is a link. It was taken in the same area at nearly the same time Valentich disappeared. If the eyes and ears of Pine Gap are as powerful as Robert Dean suggests, they must know something about the UFO snapped by amateur photographer Roy Manifold. But quite a clear night. It was uh, cool. We had the fire going in the... Uh in the front room and uh, everything just seemed normal that night and I'd, I'd taken the photographs and uh, I'd take, taken the six consecutive ones and I'd, uh, I'd walked inside and I'd just uh, come inside, oh I've only been there about maybe five minutes and I heard an aeroplane uh, pass overhead. The airplane was Freddie's Cessna just moments before Valentich's fateful UFO encounter. And later, when Roy had his film developed, along with the beautiful sunset, there was this important clue to Freddie's mysterious disappearance. He got this object here on his sixth frame, and uh, it was quite strange that he, he thought that at one instant there was something wrong with the camera, but then when he took back to the laboratory at Kyoduk, they assured him that uh, that object there, it's nothing wrong with it. It's definitely got an object on it. Computer analysis and enhancement of the UFO in Manifold's photograph reveals that the object was a solid, metallic, reflective sphere, approximately 70 feet in diameter. The fact that this picture was taken just minutes before Manifold heard Valentich's airplane suggests this may be the craft Freddie saw moments before he vanished without a trace. Air Corps officials, however, vehemently disagree. Some of the experts said that he got disorientated and that he was flying upside down. But the Cessna 182 uh, has got uh, the petrol or gas, aviation gas, is in the wings and it's gravity fed to the motor. So 49 seconds of flying upside down, the motor would have cut out. He was talking for six and a half minutes. So uh, that tells you he wasn't flying upside down, he wasn't disorientated. Now are you all clear, 229? And there's no strange craft, right? Could be a miscalculation. Did you hear a vibratory? Tower, heard nothing but my own sound. Electrical phenomena, 229. Perhaps ball lightning can do strange things. Mirage is not uncommon with storm flare. Storm flare far off to East Tower. Not vapor trail either. Holy, he, here he comes from the southwest. All shiny and metallic. My God, she comes at me! Knowing Frederick, uh, he wouldn't deviate rules and regulation. Uh, I'm quite certain that he would not go on that radio and inquire about to the air traffic controller what he's got around him, unless it was something really worthwhile to ask. Because to him, it wasn't a like conventional aircraft, therefore uh, something else and could have been extraterrestrial, uh, but the time will tell. For 17 years, a family has searched for answers, and now they hope that Pine Gap will share its information concerning Freddy, the UFO in this photograph, and one of the most puzzling encounters in UFO history. Only two pilots are believed to have disappeared as a result of their aerial contact with the UFO. Fred Valentich and Thomas Mantell, a military pilot from Louisville, Kentucky. The consensus among ufologists is that these incidents occurred not because the UFOs were aggressive, but because pilots have never been taught what to do in the event of a UFO encounter. 